I am Ramona and welcome to Ramona Interviews. And with me in the chair today is Sharon McLaughlin. Now she is um, the owner of McLaughlin Education Consulting. Now what does that mean for you and I and for all our children? It means plan ahead. <laughs> <laughs> it does. <laughs> but we're, talk we're gonna talk specifically um, about college. And also we're going to touch on those people who are going into um, change of life careers as well and what they're going to be looking for for financing, admissions, testing. Uh, we're not going to overwhelm you. This is going to be a great show with a lot of information. Welcome, Sharon. Thank you. It's, I'm glad to be here. Thank you so much. Now, let's start with why is college planning so important and how did you first get into this field? How does your expertise really culminate in what you're doing? Well, college planning is really important these days because it has gotten so competitive. You have more students uh, going to high school, more of them are graduating from high school, and more of them are going to college. And those that are applying to college are applying to more colleges. So the acceptance rates at, at some of the elite schools are down in the single digits. So, you know, wow. five and six percent at the Yales and the Harvards and the Dartmouths. So it, it is a lot more competitive. Uh, I started getting into this um, about eight years ago. I had been working in colleges as a, an admissions administrator and a financial aid director. And I just saw the need for parents and students to really do a lot of the planning that they were coming to school without having done. Yeah. And, and so how many years were you in that field? I've been working, it had been working in uh, college admissions and financial aid for over 20 years. Okay. And I've worked at uh, four-year colleges and two-year colleges, private colleges and public colleges. So I have a feel for all different types of colleges and programs. Yeah. And, w and what uh, was there, was, did you see the need and that's why you just kind of went and, and, and formed your own consulting group or was it to be a woman entrepreneur or was it a lot of different things or was it a change it was, of life for you? It was, it was all of those things. As particularly a director of financial aid, I saw families coming in not knowing how to to plan on the financial side of it, um, doing all the paperwork last minute, making decisions that if they had done some planning several years before, they would not be in the situation they were in. Uh, and when you're working in the colleges, you're just so overwhelmed with institutional, state, and federal regulation that although you do some counseling, you really can't get to them early enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because you're dealing with juniors and seniors, where I like to work with families going back as early as sophomore year. Sophomore year. Now, that doesn't become a stress point when you start at, at sophomore year. Because, you know, I mean, what is one of the benefits of coming to you, having that extra year? That doesn't mean in the sophomore year you actually choose your college. No, but there, uh -huh. are, there are aspects of the whole process that you really want to start thinking about as a sophomore. Um, the testing is you know, the PSATs that we were talking about before the show, mm -hmm. those types of things, those decisions need to be made early on. If a student is struggling in school, we, I want to work with them early enough to help overcome some of those issues that they may be having. When I meet with the, the client and the student, we go over um, their, t their previous test scores, if they've taken MCAS tests, um, ask them how they feel about testing, what are their issues or concerns about testing, Talk to them about the differences between the SAT and the, and the uh, ACT because there are differences. They test similar things, but they're structured differently, and the way you take those tests is, and the strategies for taking those tests are slightly different. Mm -hmm. um, so knowing the strengths and weaknesses of the student helps me to de help them determine which test to take. And there's also a number of colleges and a growing number of colleges that don't require either SAT or ACT. And then what do they use? Well, they rely heavily on the, the uh, grade point average and the high school record and what the student has done uh, outside of school, jobs, activities. Uh, Let's talk about financial aid because it is a maze. <laughs> um, how does this differ? Um, how do you help someone differently from consulting for college admissions versus financial aid? Financial aid has deadlines. Right. You know, there's certain things you have to look at. The fact that I have worked in a financial aid office for a good 15 years, and I know what the paperwork is, I know what the process is, I know what the questions are and how they're supposed to be answered, um, that's very um, 
beneficial to my clients because before they send in their application, mm -hmm. I always have my clients send me a copy of it so I can review it to make sure they answer the questions right because I know which questions tend to be difficult um, for parents and students. And the thing that families don't realize is the financial aid form, for example, for next fall, the application for financial aid, the federal free application for financial aid, the FAFSA, um, that application becomes available January 1st. Mm -hmm. And you fill it out based on your tax return for, it will be for 2011. The so, prior year. Right, the prior year. So I will work with clients who are maybe making some decisions about their finances um, with their financial planner a year or two in advance to make sure that the decisions that they're making while the student is a sophomore or a junior aren't going to adversely impact their financial aid application. That makes sense. FAFSA, the federal form, is used by all students applying to any college for financial aid and that's used to determine your eligibility for federal grants, scholarships, work studies, uh, institutional money mm -hmm. in many cases and state scholarships. Okay. With the CSS profile, private schools tend to use that um, which has a slightly different formula and, and uh, is a little bit more restrictive. Um, they, they use that to determine eligibility for their institutional aid. So some students are going to be filling, parents and students are going to be filling out the, just the FAFSA and some are going to be filling out both. Um, and that's something that families tend to not realize going into it as well. But um, so what I, what I do is I will explain, I, I can actually do an analysis and tell the family what their expected family contribution is. Okay. That stays constant no matter what college you go to. It's okay. just the cost of attendance mm -hmm. from school to school. And in the fall, fall that's when we're, we're doing the preliminary um, analysis and then January we're having them fill out the actual forms. Sure. And in the spring of the senior year when the acceptances come from the colleges and many times they come with the award letters, we sit down and we look at the award letters and determine which is the best package. Not just the total dollar value but what's the mix between grants and work, work study and student loans. And there are private student loans as well as federal student loans. And you always want to first access scholarships and grants, then work study, then your federal loans, whether it's student loans or federal parent loans, and then the private loans. Okay. That, that's the hierarchy of, of financial aid. Uh, how can your services uh, help someone that's going through that kind of career change? Because change of life now could be a 25. It could be. It, it doesn't be. have to be at, at well, 45 or 50. Right. With the unemployment situation the way it is, there are more people that are either transitioning to a new career because the um, industry that they were in um, has disappeared or has really contracted in this economy, um, or they're trying to um, upgrade their skills to save the job that they may have. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I, I can work with uh, either of those. When you're dealing with adults, um, you need to e actually investigate what their background is. Have they had any cl courses or any credit in college? Some of them come with an associate's degree. Some may come with three years of college and dropped out for um, career or family issues mm -hmm. and are trying to give back. Um, so I want to look at where they were mm -hmm. um, and what their career interests are and how we can help them balance that with their job and family. Um, many times because of their life experience they may have gained some knowledge in a particular area and I can lead them to how to test out of a an accounting course or uh, a writing course or a math course. And that can save you money as it, well. And that can save you money and time. Um, you know, with the undergraduates coming right out of high school they're taking the SAT, the ACT may not be necessary if they have, um, you know, the, the adult might not be necessary for an adult if they have some college credit already mm -hmm. because many schools take uh, transfer credits in lieu of an SAT or an ACT right. or some other um, type of a test. So there are certainly um, similarities in the process but obviously there are um, components of the whole process that are slightly different for adults. You know, and I work not just with the undergraduate, but graduate students. So if someone's 
has a bachelor's degree, is career changing, and wants to look for a, um, a graduate program, you know, I can help them with that as well. As well. Okay. And it, only in Massachusetts, or? No, I have, I have students um, and clients from across the country, and I have students that are going to colleges across the country. Okay. I have uh, students who are going to graduate school in, in, in Texas. I have uh, students that are going to school in New York and mm -hmm. different parts of New England and you know, all over the place. Yeah. What's your website again? It's headforcollege.com. Okay, and they can, uh, there's a phone number on there, they can contact you or they can uh, email right. you right. and get in touch with you. Thank you so much, Sharon. Thank you. It's very educational. I enjoyed being here, thank, thank you. you. I am Ramona, and you've been watching Ramona Interviews. Have a wonderful week.